This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman with Juan Gonzalez. We turn now to a deepening rift within the conservative political movement. New details have emerged in the internal turmoil at the key Tea Party group Freedom Works. The Washington Post reports the group's chairman and former House Majority Leader Dick Armey attempted to seize power in a coup-like maneuver earlier this year before receiving a multimillion-dollar payout to leave. Army entered the Freedom Works offices in September with an armed aide who escorted two top employees off the premises, while Army suspended several others. Just days later, however, Army left the group after an Illinois millionaire pledged $8 million over 20 years in exchange for his departure. Speaking on Fox Business News, uh, Army commented on his decision to leave Freedom Works. He also denounced House Speaker John Boehner's decision to kick four Tea Party-backed congressmen out of key committee assignments. I left there because I had serious uh, concerns about the ethical and moral behavior of uh, the senior leadership. Uh, I don't particularly want to discuss that at length. I think it will be resolved. I'm consoled by my certain knowledge that time wounds all heals and that this will be, in fact, at some point all sorted out. But it has nothing to do with John Boehner's misguided sense that he could discipline his colleagues in his conference, all of whom were elected as Republicans on the Republican ticket, or the notion that people have been dreaming right. about since '09 that the Tea Party will dry up and blow away. These Tea Party activists are people of long-standing commitment to ideals, and they know their activism right. matters, and they will be there in the next election cycle. That was former. House Majority Leader Dick Armey. Freedom Works has been a pivotal force behind the victories of Tea Party candidates in recent years. The money for Dick Armey's exit came from Illinois billionaire Richard Stevenson, founder of the for-profit Cancer Treatment Centers of America. Stevenson was reportedly behind more than $12 million in donations funneled to the Freedom Works Super PAC in the weeks before the 2012 election. For more, we're joined by Democracy Now! video stream by Ken Vogel, a reporter for Politico who covers money and politics, recently wrote an article called Inside the Dick Army Freedom Works Split. Ken Vogel, welcome to Democracy Now! Um, so Dick Army came in with an armed guard um, to try to take over uh, his organization? Yeah, kind of a bizarre story. Uh, really, a lot led up to it to get to that point. And uh, my understanding is my reporting suggested that maybe there were some members of the board of directors of Freedom Works who actually took his side and actually placed uh, these two senior uh, officials at Freedom Works on administrative leave before this showdown <laughs> with the, the armed guard transpired. Nonetheless, it, uh, it was already ugly at that point. That only made it that much uglier. And it'll be interesting to see what happens with Freedom Works, because while Dick Army may have only been a figurehead by the point that uh, these tensions boiled over and manifested themselves uh, in this coup, he was a rather powerful figurehead, both as a, a, a former uh, a majority leader of the House who had a lot of connections in the media, and more importantly, as a fundraiser. This, th it's interesting that this Dick Stevenson guy, who, as far as we can tell, and, and uh, we don't know a, a ton about the donors to Freedom Works because most of the money is coming in through the 501c4 non-disclosing nonprofit affiliate of Freedom Works. But this Dick Stevenson guy is a major donor, uh, probably one of the biggest. And so his willingness to essentially, through this agreement, side with Matt Kibbe and Adam Brandon against Dick Army, even though he, he he entered into this agreement that will eventually pay Dick Army eight million dollars over twenty years, uh, is is significant because it suggests that maybe this new leadership, Freedom Works, will have the backing of some major donors, even without Dick Army's leadership. Well, uh, Ken Vogel, according to some of the coverage, the, the claims as to the source of the rift uh, are, are very different, uh, depending on which side you listen to on. From uh, Army side, he's claiming that it has to do with ethical questions about uh, the, the president of, of Freedom Works, Matt Kibbe, uh, writing a book where he was personally betting, benefiting from while using the staff of Freedom Works. But on Kibbe's side, uh, he's claiming that it has to do more with— 
the fact that Army was trying to pull Freedom Work, Works more in a main, uh, to support mainstream Republican candidates instead of maintaining uh, its support for more Tea Party uh, oriented uh, uh, Republican candidates. What's your sense of these uh, claims and counterclaims? Well, I don't think that they're necessarily mutually exclusive. Uh, certainly, there were personality tensions there uh, that involved both uh, sort of who was in charge, just a power struggle. And Dick Army, uh, to, from Dick Army's perspective, it, the, these uh, these two senior officials, Matt Kibbe and Adam Brandon, were trying to wrest control of him, and were doing so in a way that, from Army's perspective, again could redound to their personal benefit, potentially in violation of the group's uh, 501c4, 501c3 tax status. That is where there can be no personal benefit accrued by any member of the leadership, any, quote, interested party. Uh, additionally, Dick Army thought that they were uh, kind of hogging the limelight, quite literally, that they were uh, hiding media requests that were coming in for him and instead offering up Matt Kibbe. Uh, I can personally attest to that as someone who has covered this organization in the past where I had made media requests to talk to Dick Army and had instead gotten Matt Kibbe, who, you know, at the time I didn't think anything of because I thought, Matt, you know, Matt Kibbe is a very articulate guy. He is obviously very involved in the leadership of Freedom Works and the Tea Party movement uh, more generally. Uh, but you could see why Dick Army sort of retroactively might, uh, might uh, uh, quibble with that. Uh, and and additionally, from the philosophical approach, certainly there is something to that. Freedom Works and other Tea Party groups did get a lot of criticism for going in behind uh, candidates, anti-establishment candidates in Republican primaries who the establishment deems sort of less viable as general election candidates. I'm talking now about uh, Richard Murdoch, that the, uh, the uh, candidate who beat Dick Luger in the Indiana uh, Senate primary. I'm talking about going back to 2010, Sharon Angle, the candidate uh, who defeated a couple more establishment candidates in the Nevada Senate primary. Uh, and, and both of those candidates ended up losing to Democrats who, in many ways, were considered rather vulnerable uh, from a sort of, uh, you know, political odds makers perspective headed into the election. And so there were establishment Republicans who really pointed the finger of blame at the Tea Party and at groups like Freedom Works for hindering uh, their potential Senate gains and cutting them short in both 2010 and 2012. Let's uh, whether Dick Army had wanted them to go in a more establishment direction, I hadn't heard that at the time. Well, actually, uh, let's let's that, turn it's to certainly possible, and it certainly let... would undercut Matt Kibbe and Adam Brandon and other Tea Party leaders' sort of sense as to what the Tea Party should be. Yeah, let's turn to Dick Armey on CBS, insisting the Tea Party was not holding back Republican leaders from agreeing to a budget deal with additional revenues to avert the so-called fiscal cliff. No, not at all. Uh, first of all, understand the Tea Party is not a, a political party. It is a group of people across the country that have a commitment to a set of principles. They believe economic growth is the first most important need of this country, which means get the government to stand down, quit interfering, quit obstructing growth okay. in, in so many ways, well, not the leader? least of which is the uh, EPA. Le that's Dick Armey, former head of Freedom Works, former Senate uh, House Majority Leader. Um, Ken Vogel, talk about what's happening with the fiscal cliff right now and the major divisions within the Republican Party. You follow the conservative movement within the Republican Party. Yeah, that's right. And I think that that is the story of the fiscal cliff uh, stalemate, much as it was last year with the stalemate over increasing the debt ceiling. It is, in fact, these Tea Party members uh, who were elected first in the, you know, in the conservative wave of 2010 when Republicans took back the House. And uh, subsequently, some there, there were some additions to the sort of Tea Party caucuses in both the House and the Senate in 2012. But many Fewer, and in fact, many Tea Party members lost their re-election bids in 2012. And I think, you know, it's, it's hard to generalize, but uh, you could look at a number of them and say that the the, the the sort of souring of public opinion on the Tea Party as a result of their perceived unwillingness to compromise in 2011 over the over the uh, the debt ceiling negotiations 
probably was held against them, probably hurt not only them and their reelection bids, but also Republicans more broadly and the Republican brand, because it is uh, that they are perceived to be the party of intransience as a result of these this this increasingly small uh, minority within the House Republican conference that's made up of self-identifying Tea Party folks who rode the Tea Party wave in 2010 uh, into office. And, and they, they are in some ways carrying out their mandate. This is what they said during the campaign. They said that they were not going to compromise on fiscal issues. They're not doing it. It's, it's had uh, you know, a rather gridlock-inducing effect on the government and a rather damaging effect on public perceptions of both the Tea Party and the Republican Party. And your sense now of uh, where Dick Armey goes uh, after this, uh, with this $8 million cushion that he has to, to leave uh, FreedomWorks? Well, I think this is he perceives this as his retirement. And uh, that's the way well, when I talked about this with him, that's the way he framed it. He he did, in fact, take a hit uh, when he decided to go sort of all in with Freedom Works and uh, refashion himself as a Tea Party leader, which struck a lot of folks within the Tea Party as odd. I mean, there's always been this kind of uh, tug of war, if you will, in the Tea Party between national leaders uh, national groups that have deep pocketed contributors and benefactors like Freedom Marks, like Dick Army and, and Dick Stevens and the uh, Cancer Center uh, CEO, and the actual grassroots. I, I think it's an oversimplification to say that the Tea Party is just a sort of astroturf corporate funded uh, interest group or an extension of the Republican Party even. Clearly, there is that element to it, but there is also this broad swath, or there was in 2010, this broad swath of grassroots activists. Ken, we have to leave it there. Ken Vogel the covering politics. For Thanks so much for watching this report from Democracy Now!, your daily independent global news hour. We don't accept advertising or corporate funding, but rather rely on donations from viewers like you. Please make your contribution by visiting democracynow.org. We need your support today to keep bringing you this hard-hitting, in-depth reporting.